What's going on guys, Jack here and welcome to episode 62 of the Road to Glory here with FC United of Manchester. Hopefully you guys are good. Um, I'm I'm really happy, you guys. Like seriously now, this has been a fantastic first year in the Premier League. It couldn't have gone any better for us and it really has been capped off by this last month, you know. We're, we're, we are within touching distance of 7th place and due to the League Cup and FA Cup winners... Um, we won't get Europa qualification if we, even if we were to finish 7th. Just to finish in the top half of the league, which is looking likely now, in our first year in this division is absolutely insane. Last episode, in episode 61, we played QPR and won 3-0. Since then, we've played uh, 5, we've drawn 4, won 1, but the draws have come at some very strong oppositions. And just to avoid defeat and now be six games unbeaten is really good. So uh, this kind of period started with a 2-2 draw against Norwich. Uh, we took a lead early on. They pegged us back and then Shane Barney came up big for us in the dying embers of the game to make it 2-2. On the back of this, we then went and got a 1-0 win against Stoke. This was actually a really good start strike by Mep and Walters, the left wing back. Um, I think he was playing right wing back because if we had some injuries and just the way things worked out... Um, we didn't have a player who could fill in the role and he was kind of the best player for the job. But, I mean, this was a quality finish by him. Uh, suspicions of offside, but overall an insane finish for a left-back. And that was a really good start uh, to the month, you know, th those kind of two results that went our way. Uh, then moving on to the next game, it was a 1-1 draw against Blackburn. Slightly disappointing this result, but um, nevertheless, we scored late on. Looking at the stats, Blackburn probably edged it, but another result where we grind out a result at the end of the day and we get an unexpected point. Speaking of unexpected points, when I saw at the start of the season that we had Chelsea and Arsenal in two of our last three games, I was worried that might impact our survival chances. However, looking at the stats and the, the league and how everything's gone this year, we got two fantastic results in these two games. We got a 1-1 draw at Stamford Bridge against Chelsea. Their goal from came from a penalty. And although looking at the stats they dominated, we we stuck to our game plan, you know, absorbing pressure with our five really good defenders and then hitting them on the break. And it worked for us. You know, you'll see it here. Uh, ball gets played through well and then Barney... Uh, played. He, he's been having a blinder this season, he really has, but this was a really good goal for him. Tidy little finish, breaking through the line of the defence and smashes it into the top top right-hand corner on that sweet left foot of his. So that was 1-1 against Chelsea, and then we got a 1-1 draw against Arsenal, which means that in the two fixtures against Arsenal this year, we got a win and a draw, which honestly is insane. Uh, looking at it, Pell Toller, the goalkeeper, did get man of the match, so that gives you an idea of how much pressure we were under. We had one shot on target, but it was one that went in, and the at the end of the day, we're clinical. We, are, we we take our chances when they come to us. And the goal did come from Glenn Stewart there. Set piece, really poor marking by Arsenal. And um, from there, we tried to set up, uh, kind of set up shop and just not concede. They did grab a goal like immediately into the second half, and I was worried they were going to come back. But we had, like kind of held out for the one-one, which was ridiculous. You know that is crazy. So that's our fixtures. Looking at the Premier League table, we're currently in ninth place uh, on 47 points. Uh, unless some very freak results were to happen, uh, we're pretty much guaranteed to be in the top 10. We are playing Villa in our last game, who are bottom of the league, so you'd expect us to go and get a win there. Um, so that's what we're going to be aiming for. It's, gonna be, it's not going to be easy, but I have faith in our lads to go out and do it. Uh, Shane Barney's still on the top goal scorers in the league kind of list. Um, he's played absolutely amazingly this year. He's now worth £10 million. His value seems to go up every week. Um, but no, I mean, this team this year, we've played superbly. We've defended from the back, and that is what has kind of saved us uh, this year. You know, that's what's kept us so high up in the league. The fact that we've defended so well, and then we hit teams on the break, and it works for us. You know, it just does. I can't ex really explain it other than just saying that the players play well as a unit. And we're able to defend well and hit teams on the break. And ultimately, that is what it's all about. Uh, so, Vyman can't play today's last game of the season because of um, we're playing against the team he's loaned out from, which is Villa. And in his loan, he has a kind of deal saying that he can't play against them. Uh, so, that's our team for today's game. Just a quick look at the finances. Uh, this year, we currently have £35 million in the bank. The reason for that being is um, just the, am the amount of money in the Premier League is unreal. And because we're only spending £164,000 on wages per week, um, 
it means that um, well there's not much expenditure so we just end up making a lot of money so hopefully over the summer I can really strengthen the squad and I'll get a lot of money to work with it'd be nice to get somewhere in the region of 30 million which I actually think we might get just given the kind of predictions obviously for next year we're set to make another 30 million pound profit uh, one chance I have to tell you about is uh, Leonardo Moyano he's coming in in June this guy 19 year old um, Argentine lad was on a youth contract in Argentina signed him up up. Really good player, really good striker, although I may well look to make him into a centre mid. Uh, one of those players who, he's got all like really good all-round stats, so he, I can pretty much mould him into whatever I want. He's got the basis there of a decent centre mid, or I could really focus on the aerial aspects and his like, finishing, and really kind of focus on making him into a target man. So he's got a lot of potential. Uh, this last game, we are playing Villa. There's not too much to play for in the grand scheme of things, but I'll live comment. I can talk a bit about the plan now for the future, because you know we we've, we've got to we've got to have a plan, I suppose, going forward now. Because we've kind of shown this year that we are a mid-table Premier League side. I actually kind of feel like we have overperformed to an extent. Obviously, we didn't really strengthen the squad much compared to last year, and so it's really good to see players making that big step up through the divisions and particularly into the Premier League, continuing to perform well. Uh, so it's really good to see. I mean, for, in terms of kind of future plans, I think in the next four years, I want to be qualifying for Europe, uh, be that through the league or through the cup. That's kind of a target. Now, we may well do it sooner than that, but I think four years is kind of the minimum time frame kind of thing. Uh, it's important to note, obviously, that I feel as if we have overperformed this year. I don't think we'll finish this high next year, but we'll, we'll, we'll do our best. Um, it's really going to be about kind of strengthening the squad in all areas and trying to build like for the future obviously I've pretty much built for the future in my team throughout the entire playthrough and it's really come kind of given it's kind of paying off now because a lot of these players who I've brought in three or four years ago are now Premier League mid-table players who are good enough at this level which is really good to see but I think in terms of the future, I really want to focus on like, developing the club in terms of getting a, a better structure there. We're still ground sharing with Berry, who are in League 2, and I want to get a new stadium built soon. Uh, that's kind of a, a two years, you know, get a new stadium built. Uh, the current training facilities are being upgraded at the moment. As soon as they're done, I'm going to probably upgrade them again. A fun grabbing a goal for us there, though. 1-0 uh, to us away at Villa. But no, I think that's something that I've got to focus on. I mean, the training facilities are set to improve, I think, the building work on them finishes in October. I then want to upgrade them again immediately and really develop the club, get a youth system in place, get an academy sorted. Because I've not had a lot of money up until this point, because the Premier League has so much money, I've not been able to kind of improve training facilities and the youth academy and stuff like that as I've gone up through the league. So we still have the kind of the youth academy and training facilities of a of a kind of really low non-league side. Which obviously is very problematic. So that's something I've got to look to kind of, I guess, sort out. That that's kind of that's going to be essential for the longevity of the club and in order to ensure kind of continued success. And it will also help these players develop. You've got to remember a lot of these players, like Glenn Stewart, have obviously been here years and improved a lot. Um, but they've not had training facilities that are good enough to help them reach their maximum potential. And that's something I've really got to look to press on with. In terms of transfers, I feel as if I need one or two more strikers. I mean, uh, Vyman's probably loan expires. I'm still not sure if I'm going to put in the £2.9 million pre-agreed fund kind of um, transfer bid that I have agreed with, Newca uh, with Newcastle, with Aston Villa. That's something I've got to look at. But I certainly want to improve the strike force of the team. I feel as if... Uh, Peltari and uh, Canadra are really good players and will play well together in the centre of the park. I would like to eventually switch to maybe a 4-4-2 or back to the system that we played in the championship of the kind of 4-1-2-2-1, like the 4-3-3 with the wide midfielders, because that did work for us. Uh, that's something to look at in the future, I guess, as we add a bit more quality and we become a more established Premier League side. We can't get too carried away either because although we've like obviously had this insane first season and we're looking like we're going to finish 8th or ninth in the league, uh, it's important to kind of bear in mind the fact that a lot of teams in real life do this as well. You'll see teams like, um, I'm trying to think, Southampton, Reading, um, you know, teams who are really well established in the Premier League after one season and the next year they really struggle. You know, they call it like second season syndrome, that kind of, you play every game is a cup final when you first league, kind of league what do you call it, your first season in the Premier League. And then second season, there's not as much kind of fight about you because you're an established team. 
Does that make sense? Shane Barney there. He buries it. Is that Shane Barney's second goal of the game? Is it? I don't think it is. Oh, no. A thumb got the first goal. But that's really good for Barney. Grabbing one more. One more. And assuming the other top goal scorers who are near the top don't score anymore. I think Barney would go top of the top goal scorers chart. Don't quote me on that. So... I tell you what, let's go all out attack because I want Barney to get. I want Barney to get. Uh, I want Barney to get his uh, thingy. I, I want him to get his um, golden boot. Let's just push for it. Let's just throw men up. Um, direct, quick, no creative freedom. Let's go. Let's just heave it up to Barney. Not long left. Let's just get the ball forward. Let's try and get, grab Barney the golden boot award because we have this game pretty much sealed and dealed against Aston Villa. But no, I think that's I think that's the game unless we're going to get a very late goal. But guys, I'd be interested to know what you guys kind of make of this first season. But as if the teams performed absolutely outstandingly to finish where we have. As I said, really got to look to build for the future now in terms of building our own stadium, uh, getting the training facilities up to a high enough standard, bringing in some quality. I'm not going to be spending as much in terms of one lump sum. I'm not going to buy one like huge player like I did this year where I just spent £10 million to get in one centre mid. This year I want to bring in three or four players who are really going to add some quality and depth to the side uh, with the money that's available which I don't know how much I'm going to get so we'll have to stay tuned and Kai and find out um, what we're actually going to get. Anyway, looking at the league table, we finished ninth in the end. It looks like teams around us won their last games of the season but ultimately that's an absolutely fantastic result for us. Um, yeah, I, I'm really proud of the lads for that because ninth in our first season is insane. Man, you win the league quite comfortably in the end. They only lost two games all season. Then City, Chelsea, Arsenal and Liverpool, very fortunate to avoid the drop. They really struggled this year. They weren't safe until the second to last game of the year. Uh, but no, I'm really delighted with that first season performance. Uh, Barney getting second top goal scorer in the league. I think he must be fighting it out for um, the player, the young player of the season in the league. Uh, average ratings, Adonis and Glenn Stewart both getting on the overall kind of top performers in the entire league. Gives you an idea of how solid our defence has been this year. Although we've played with five at the back and I know it's not the most positive kind of football. That like You've got to bear in mind that defend my defenders have played really well. You've got like, uh, Adonis obviously who's played insanely. Uh, Graziano... What's his average rating this year in the league? 7.47. You know, fantastic performances. Musavi's improved an awful lot this year, the Iranian lad. He's getting his tackling up. I mean, if I show you, that's been his individual focus. I want him to be a better defender. Because when he came to the club, he was a good wing-back, but he was an incredibly attacking wing-back. Whereas I really wanted to focus on getting his defensive stats up so that in the long run, we can play him as a, just a right full-back when we go to four at the back in the future. So that's that's something to kind of bear in mind, guys. When it comes to your individual training, you've got to be planning ahead and knowing like how you intend to change the shape of your squad as you add quality. So with this guy, he's a right wing back. He didn't have very good defensive stats. This year we focused on his tackling, and he's improved so much in that area that he's now looking a lot more like a right back in terms of his stats, which is good to see. Um, and what what's his average rating been? Musavi seven point seven. I mean that's not too bad either, considering that we're we were expected to go down. Uh, seven point two eight for Marine Pell tolerant goal. I don't know what your average rating is. Six point eight six. I don't know. Keepers always seem to struggle with average ratings. Maybe that's just me. Um, but no, like fantastic performances by all the lads. I mean you can see that they've played superbly. If I insert column, oh god, is it stats average? Average um, rating. Where's average rating? I can't find it. I was going to show you the average ratings rather than me having to click on every player at once. Oh, if people are wondering how to do this, by the way, you just right click and then you can insert column and then you can insert whatever column you want. Pro tip of the day. I think I've covered that in loads of other videos, but it's one of those things that people still ask about because I know that not everyone gets a chance to watch every episode. Um, I can't find it, guys. But all in all, just a really good performance this season by the entire team. Uh, Shane Barney is closing in on the kind of top performer uh, in our history of league goals at FC United of Manchester. Uh, he's, he's, he must be really close to it now. In fact, if we go on biography, does it say um, 85 league goals for the club? Or oh, 85 goals for the club?